Hi everyone, Jaffe here, and welcome back to Around the World in Many Days. Today we're doing something called Printer's Devilry, something we have done before. This is episode 34, and it's titled Campfire Crossword. As always, let's start by reading the preamble of the puzzle. Uh, let me just show you first. We have a grid, we have some crossword clues, and let's read the preamble. So these are Printer's Devilry clues with an additional definition part in each clue. However please, uh, however, please read on, because these rules uh, are a bit different than the last time. In each clue, you must find a word which can be inserted somewhere into the clue, possibly sp uh, changing spacing, punctuation, and capitalization, but not the order of, order of letters, so that the whole sentence makes sense. So stopping there for just a bit, I think the in the previous uh, episode, which was episode 13, was the last time we had printers devilry, uh, we had this example, so um, a spit fed on the runway with a seven letter answer. And how this works is you insert some letters into in one part of uh, of this string of letters, and then you uh, correct the spelling and, and spacing, spacing, but you can't change the order of these letters. So the answer to this is Ireland. And how that works is you put Ireland here. Um, and then you just change spacing like this and change the capitalization and you have a sentence that makes it a Spitfire landed on the runway and a Spitfire is a type of plane so Ireland would be a valid answer for this one so that's how just normal printer's devil works now in addition to that we have so let's see. Uh, in addition, each clue contains, either at the start or end of the clue, a straight crossword definition for the answer of one of the other clues. So again, stopping there. Last time we had um, the definition of, of this uh, answer somewhere in the clue. So uh, here it might be country here. And that would have been the that would have been the definition. Just mark it like this. So the definition of this island is country. Now this time we are not going to have the the same kind of thing. The definition is going to be somewhere, but it's not going to be in the same clue. That the, so this this uh, uh, definition of this island, if this was one of the clues, would be in one of the other clues. So we have to find the corresponding definition in in the other clues. That's basically what's going on. And unlike last time, it's going to be either at the start or end of the clue. It can't be in the middle. Last time it could have been anywhere. anywhere. So, so the definitions are, we're going to have to be looking for the definitions as well. And then we have um, some clarifications. So enum enumerations refer to the answer of each clue, not the answer which def definition part points at. For example, if the answer to clue number five was the word fifth, and the answer to clue number two was second, uh, clue number five might start with something like a measure of time, because a second is a measure of time, and clue number five would then be containing a definition of the answer number two. Uh, and clue number five would then have the definition five, because the answer to clue number five would be fifth, which is five letters, or five letters long. Sounds more complicated than it is, but let's go through it when we start solving it. Hope that makes sense. And now just uh, what we're looking for, what the destination is this time. So today I have enjoyed the great outdoors. I have trekked deep into the wilderness, had coffee at a campfire, and seen moose, bison, and beavers at an amazing natural environment. Can you guess where I am? Love Gladys. So looking for some kind of wilderness destination this time. Let's start solving, get the editable grid open, and I have a notepad open with these clues, and I'm st slowly starting to learn how to use this one. So here we have the clues, and I have them in notepad because we, we're going to have to be, going to have to change, change the, change these, so I just want to show where these letters go. So let's start at the top. 
And uh, before we start, just a reminder how how we go about solving this. So to solve a printer's devil devil clue, your um, a good way to do it is to read the sentence, whole sentence out loud. And often there's one place that sounds out of place or sounds one part that doesn't make sense somehow. And that's often the part that you, you're going to want to concentrate on. And a good example is this first one. He fly a little, uh, he fly a little bit tipsy after drinking a number of beers. Now here, the clear starting point is going to be this word fly. Now, first of all, uh, no, several things wrong with this fly. First of all, he would be he flies or he flew. It can't be he fly. So immediately something wrong here just with these two words. And also uh, fly tipsy. I mean, if you are a bad pilot, you might, I mean, it might make some sense. But the more common uh, word for uh, for associated with tipsy might be be tipsy or feel tipsy or something like that. And so that's going to be, and we have an F here, so it could be feel, he feels, he felt. And this, the rest basically makes sense uh, with a little bit tipsy. So this can just remain unchanged. Now, uh, it's going to be felt, he felt. And we're going to be inserting something here, and it's five letters, starting with ELT. And we need two more letters that's going to go with this LY here. Now, what can we put here that would make a five letter word? In this case, it's going to be a name, five letter name. Uh, that also makes a word here. And the answer is Elton. The answer is going to be Elton. So he felt only a little bit tipsy after drinking a number of beers. So that is a completely fine sentence. That makes sense. And we have inserted a valid crossword answer, which is Elton. Now, normally we wouldn't have, if this was just normal printer's devilry, we wouldn't have any way to confirm it, other, except just the crossing answers in the grid. But here we do have some confirmation so we have to find the definition part in one of the other answers so what defines elton now that's going to be a, a person named elton and there's obviously one very famous one and it's going to be if we scroll down it's going to be here we have john the musician so elton john obviously so i'm going to mark this with the italics and that means just that we have used this as a definition part. So we don't have to consider this clue when we're looking for the, the remaining uh, definitions. We know that we have found one in this one. And there's obviously going to be one in each. So we did find a definition for Elton. So that means Elton is going to be correct and we can insert that in the grid. Here we are. Now that doesn't help us with the others because there's no crossing letter, but uh, that that is the one answer in the grid. So let's move forward to number two. Uh, this is a longer one. To make systematic progress, the company had town E between innovation and satisfying their existing customers. And again, pretty straightforward to see where the issue is. This E uh, just jumping out, right? And also town. The company had town, even if this E wasn't there. I mean, what's this town? town doing here. Now the answer is had to is going to be a unit here. The company had to do something. And this, then this is going to be unchanged between these two things. So we're going to change the spacing here. I'm going to change the capitalization here. I'm going to make this lowercase, which is which we can do. So it's going to be something inserted after this this W. Now it could be here as well, something ending in W and E. It's possible, but here it's uh, after this W. So have to had to do something starting with the W and ending in N E between innovation and satisfying their existing customers. 
and here the the correct sentence is going to be had to walk a line so a company had to walk a line between those opposing things so we ans uh, so we inserted the word alkali here and with that correction this sentence does make sense so to make systematic progress, the company had to walk a line between innovation and satisfying their existing customers. And now, we uh, to confirm that, we have to find a definition for alkali. Now, alkali is a, um, a compound in chemistry. is some kind of uh, base, basic compound. And we are going to have, the uh, I believe, the word base here. Here we have base. So base... Uh, in this one, it's uh, an, an army base um, in this uh, surface reading, but here as the definition, we're going to need base as in chemistry. So I'm going to mark this as the definition and alkalize the answer. So let's write that in the grid. That is two done. Let's look at three then. According to my friend Lacrosse, in London is a a location that's very accessible. Now, again, lacrosse, um, I mean, that is spelled out as a name, but why would you put a name like that when you can put any name there? Pretty unlikely that you would. So it's going to be need some changing here. Also, even if this was a normal name, uh, according to my friend Charles, in London is, I mean, you don't uh, start at, uh, a sentence like that. Something in London is, or there is something in London, but you wouldn't just say, in London is whatever. So something is up uh, with this part. Now, if we look at where, uh, now, lacrosse is, we're going to have to, split that somehow it's just not going to be someone's name lacrosse and it's not going to be part of uh, um, it's going to be several words so some some kind of cross in london is going to be what we're looking for here so if we can come up with something cross in london uh, that's going to give us the answer here so according to my friend le something and we're going to have to find a, a person's name that fits here that is an actual person's name obviously it's not going to be just random letters it has to make some kind of sense even though it is a, a person's name so this like more possibilities let's say than than just words in the dictionary right because people can be named all kinds of ways, but it's going to be a, a recognizable first name. So what we're looking for here is uh, King's Cross, very famous uh, location in London. So le, and then King's is five letters, so we need two more letters. According to my friend, le something something, King's Cross in London is at a location that's very accessible. Now, all, that all makes sense. We just have to find these two words. So what kind of word would, be, would, would we be making? Well, what two letters make a first name here and a real word with this, this kings? And the answer is VI makes the name Levi and it makes Vikings, which is a, a, a word. So Vikings would be our seven letter answer here. And according to my friend Levi, King's Cross in London, and that would be just fix the, fix the punctuation here, is at a location that's very accessible. So that makes sense. And if we find a definition for this Vikings, that's going to be our answer. So where's our definition for Vikings? And here we have, back in the day, the Scandinavians. Now that's going to be just straightforwardly our, our definitions for Vikings. Obviously, not all Scandinavians were Vikings, but Scandinavians back in the day, some of, some of them were. So, close enough. Um, Vikings is going to be 
number three here. Then, and we've used this six now for, for the definition. Let's go to number four. Man credited with splitting the AI. Shh, lie awarded by the French head of state. Now again, I mean, can't be clear where the, where the split is going to be. So something is up with, first of all, this sh is just, just nonsense. It is a, a word of sorts, but it makes no sense in the middle of this whole, whole sentence. So AI, sh, liar. Now something warded by the head of, French head of state, fine. Mm. So AI, sh, so I'm going to remove these question marks, the exclamation point. I'm going to make these lowercase so we can just try to not change the actual letters. So maybe we can see better now that these are part of this one sentence. Let's make L, this L as, as lowercase as well. And if you still don't see it, a, a good way to do it is to just remove all spacing and then ju just try to space it out into words from scratch. Splitting the something obviously is going to be one thing. Splitting the something is a something is, but if it's is, then we would, uh, if, um, let's go uh, go through it again. So what I was thinking about, if splitting the something, so the a something, we would add the eight letters here, and then is, but this is doesn't really work because then the next word would start with HL, and there's no English word that start, starts with HL, I don't think. So could it be somewhere else? So ishly, so that's an end of the word, Englishly or something, Irishly. And that would leave re, but re can be uh, inserted or not inserted, but uh, connected to this word and give rewarded. So someone was rewarded by the French head of state also works and maybe even better than warded. So, so man credited with something, splitting something is, and ishly is going to be the end of the word. So this is where we are uh, adding the adding the letters and we need eight of them. Uh, something usually rewarded by the French head of state. And now this is a pretty um, um, maybe uncommon answer but uh, it ends in love so lavishly rewarded is a uh, like common enough phrase, someone is lavishly rewarded, it's very handsomely rewarded, right? So lav is going to be the end of this eight letter word. And it's going to be a name. So splitting the something. And uh, we're going to have um, man credited with splitting the something is rewarded. So we're going to have need the, the verb here as well. So is is going to be the preceding word here. So we have an eight letter word, eight letter name, I should say, ending in islav. And we need three more letters uh, to connect with this A here. And what we're looking for is uh, splitting the atom, which is obviously a huge discovery, splitting the atom. And uh, the name that we are supposed to insert here then is Tomislav. Now it's pretty pretty unusual crossword uh, name answer to find in a crossword, but we can find it uh, find the definition here. So Tomislav, if we scroll down, was the king of Croatia. So one of the kings of Croatia was. Uh, was Tomislav. And that's our definition here from 13. And this sentence then reads, man credited with splitting the atom is lavishly rewarded by the French head of state, all of which makes sense. Now this pretty might be pretty hard to find just because it's an unusual name. 
but that is the answer and we can insert that into the grid all right obviously if if you if we got stuck here and we solve the others we might be left with just this one that doesn't have a doesn't have a definition so we might be able to find that okay the definition must be the king of Croatia, and then just look up kings of Croatia. another way to find it um, so that was four let's go to number five when the rest of the group sleeps in a hoe tnt outside that's already becoming damp now if you don't see what uh, part of that sentence makes no sense i don't i don't know what to say so tnt is an explosive what's this hoe doing obviously something is going to be changed just around here so rest of the group sleeps in something and something outside is already becoming damp so two things that we have to manufacture from these by adding nine additional letters so let's just remove all this distraction this punctuation and we can add our own by the way and just might make this uh, lowercase so sleeps in a possibly and starting with h but not necessarily um well hotel is something that you might sleep in starts with this hot or this ho but if it's if it starts i mean you can insert something here here or here to make hotel but if it's here you're going to have to find some way to make this tnt work and it's pretty hard i mean what are you going to start this word with there's no word that that ends in tnt and if you try to put this t to the next word it's i mean tout side it doesn't look very doable and the easiest way to do it or the most straightforward way to do it is hotel starting here with l and then we did uh, seven more letters ending in nt so plenty of words that end in nt so the rest of the the rest of the group sleeps in a hotel well what's the rest of the group doing um so we are singling someone out so the rest of the group is sleeping in a hotel and then someone is in another place that's already becoming a dam so someone's in a in a worse uh, sleeping arrangement right and uh, if you can think of a worse place to sleep in than a hotel ending in nt that might be one way to find this so a tent so still five letters need it's going to be the rest of the group sleeps in a hotel i'm in a tent so singling out the writer of the sort of sentence or someone who is telling this this story this sentence when the rest of the group sleeps in a hotel i'm in a tent outside that's already becoming damp and what we added is the word eliminate that is nine letters and uh, if we can find a definition for eliminate then that means uh, this is going to be the answer so let's see uh, eliminate is going to be can't be the six there's no eliminate in seven to get rid of here we are to get rid of something is to eliminate it so that's just a straightforward definition and we can mark that with the italics so that's where we found the definition number nine was the definition for this eliminate and that means we can insert that into the grid then number six back in the back in the day the scandinavians and by the way uh, since we mark this as the definition it's very very unlikely that this part is going to be changed because we need this as the definition for the other thing 
so the change is going to be somewhere else. Back in the day, the Scandinavians has and crosses was what they called tic -tac -tac -tac, what they called tic tac toe in Australia. I just lost the ability to speak there. Sorry about that. Um, so obviously we have, we have has, which is just ungrammatical, right? The Scandinavians has, you don't say that. You say the Scandinavians have or the Scandinavians had, right? So something ha has to happen here. So something and crosses was what they called tic-tac-toe in Australia. Now, a bit of knowledge may be needed. In, in Australia, they call tic-tac-toe with a different name, and that name is noughts and crosses. So it could be here, something S and crosses looks pretty good. It could be here as well, but then we wouldn't be able to change this has. So it has to be here. So we need an 11 letter answer, and that's going to, oh, going to be ending in naught. And obviously this ha, ha Oh, hey, Jay is going to be. Um, we have to insert something here as well. So we need uh, six, uh, no, five more letters for an 11 letter word ending in naught. Now, there aren't many words like that. One word, 11 letters ending in naught. Now, the one is uh, one that exists is dreadnought. So if we put dreadnought here, that's a type of ship, like a warship. So that would make the Scandinavians had read Noughts and Crosses uh, was what they call tic-tac-toe in Australia. So that makes sense. And Dreadnought is our answer, and we just have to find the definition for that. So where's the warship one then? It's not in this one. Not in this one. Not in this one. No warship here. Or in five. This one we already had. Not looking at that again. This one doesn't have warship at the start or end. Here we have a warship. Just very straightforward. A warship or just warship. Um, yeah, warship. Make, makes sense as the definition. So we had one in eight. So dreadnought, therefore, is going to be the answer. And yeah, these uh, longer answers might be harder to find, but once you find it, find it, it's very unlikely that another word will fit here. And this should be pretty straightforward once you know what what this uh, like fixed phrase is. It's going to only be one thing. Okay, so we have six. Now let's look at seven. Ticket resellers told us the most recorded jazz word, hey man, and Johnny Green's body and soul. Now again, I mean, it's painfully obvious what's going, uh, what, what doesn't make sense here. Who on earth would insert this hey man if that was just meant to, meant to stay as is? And Maybe there are people like that, but not me. So, Heyman is going to need some changing here. That said, we are not inserting anything into Heyman. And the reason why is um, Body and Soul. That's an actual song by Johnny Green and another person. And that other person is Edward Heyman. Now, let's just get rid of this distraction or distracting punctuation. So it's going to be Heyman. I'm going to capitalize this H if I can. Try again. Heyman and Edward Heyman is, he, is the, the, the lyricist. I, I think Johnny Green was the composer and Edward Heyman was the, one of the guy who wrote one of the guys who wrote the lyrics. There was another guy involved as well, but he doesn't appear in the clue. So Edward is going to be the answer. We need to insert E exactly here. Uh, now, not necessarily. We could be inserting Ed somewhere here, but then we would be left with this jazzed stuff. So remove the punctuation, and the E is going to be here, and then we need uh, 10 more letters. 
and Edward Heyman. Edward Heyman and Johnny Green's body of body and soul. So that's an that's sort of a unit. So we have E as part of the answer. The, the answer ends with E and it has 10 more letters. So let's look at what precedes this uh, unknown part. The most recorded jazz something. Edward Heyman's and Johnny Green's. So first of all, we need a verb here. It's going to be is. Something, the most recorded jazz something is Edward Heyman and Johnny Green's body and soul. And body and soul is the most recorded jazz standard. So that's uh, those are the the song that, songs that everyone knows basically. So uh, songs that are, have been recorded by countless artists. And the most recorded one is indeed body and soul. So standard is the term here, giving us the answer standardize. That's what we are inserting here. So to standardize, that's ten. Uh, that's eleven letters. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's eleven letters. And now we just need to find a definition for standardize, and we can go. So don't have standardize here to make systematic, not progress, but just systematic. You make someone something standard, you make it systematic. So systematic rules for something. Uh, it's it's standard, it's standardized. So you make something systematic, you standardize it. To make systematic is the definition for for this, um, this seven. And let's just insert that into the grid. Obviously standardized can be um, spelled with a Z, but it wouldn't fit this. Uh, has to be with an with an S to make sense as as a sentence it is once inserted. Um, all right, let's look at eight. Obviously, in my puzzles you rarely see the Z because I try to follow Australian English when possible, not always, but when possible. Uh, so here we have it. in DJ I boss. Ed the, uh, the local navy by spraying holy water on a warship. And warship was the definition. So that's not going to be changed. But we know that's not going to be changed because, come on, what is this nonsense at the start? In DJ, I boss Ed. I mean, something is clearly just wrong here. So since we know that this this part is just nonsense. Let's get rid of the punctuation and the, the capitalization. Look at just the letters. In Jibost. That looks good, right? Jibo. Can you come up with a word starting with Jibo? And if the answer is obviously not, there is no such word, you're wrong. There is a word and we are looking for something starting with Jibo. And we're inserting something here. And uh, the word we're looking for is the name of an African country, Djibouti. So we are inserting UTI here. What did I just do? Using a keyboard is difficult. Let's see. Okay, so Djibouti is uh, this uh, unexpected uh, geography thing here that we find in Djibouti something. So we are inserting 10 letter word starting with UTI and then obviously the, the ending is going to be the start of this word something SSED. So this is going to be the the verb of the sentence something someone did something to the local, local navy by spraying holy water on something. Now, what do you do by sp spraying holy water? Uh, they might be blessing something, blessed. So BLE is going to be the, the end letters here. So in Djibouti, in a place in the world, someone that we don't know yet, blessed the local navy by spraying holy water on a warship. And now it's just a question of finding the four letters, and it could be a person's 
a description of a person, or it could be a person's name. Just find four letters that makes an existing word with these letters. It's going to be utilizable. So a person's name, Lisa, in this case, in Djibouti, and there's a comma there. Lisa blessed uh, the local navy by spreading holy water on a warship. Makes sense mm, as much as it can. I mean, don't know if you actually would spread holy water on a warship, but whatever. Utilizable is um, our answer here, 10 letter answer. And uh, we just have to find a definition for utilizable, so something uh, that can be used. So uh, we didn't have any definitions here yet, but it's not that. This one we did have, there's a definition here. Here we have very accessible, so something is accessible. Uh, ignoring the very just accessible something is accessible you can use it you, it's utilizable so uh, accessible in that sense you can can be taken to use so that's the definition for for the answer number eight and we can just insert that utilizable And that's in the grid. And now let's look at nine. Um, and obviously, can also since we have almost we have over half of the grid, we can already start looking at what to do with the these arrows and things like that. Uh, start thinking about that uh, because obviously we are going to need to find the name of a location here. But I'm going to go go through all these clues before before I, I reveal that. Mm, but obviously if you get stuck here you might start to think about what to do with this and maybe it helps with you helps you with the with the rest of the clues if you get stuck. But we're going to do it clues first and then then the sort of the final answer. So number nine the content of the band's first dean IOUs compositions I cannot name a single one to get rid of. Now Dean, what's Dean going doing here? And IOUs. So something is um, going to be changed here. Content of the band something. Compositions makes sense in like in a recording and that just describes something that it's good so uh, the band's recording was good and i can't name a single song to get rid of so that's the sort of context here so what's this dean i used and i'm going to make this again lowercase remove the spacing here and see where do we insert something now Enius spelled like this looks like genius. So we could be looking for 10 letters ending in G. There's not the correct word, but it does look like it could be correct. Uh, but actually, there's another word uh, which is ingenious, which is going to be our, our answer. So something ending in ing. Now the band's first DE something, a recording starting with DE, would be a demo. The band's first demo. Now we still don't have a verb here. So the content of the band's first demo does what? So it is something or is made of or contains, right, compositions. So the content is compositions. And now we need three more letters to make up this 10 letter answer. We have four plus three, we have seven. So three more letters needed. And we can look up, look at what this answer might be. M-O-I-S something, 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 ing. Now what works is 10, moistening would be the answer. 
moistening and the the whole sentence would read the content of the band's first demo is 10 ingenious compositions i cannot name a single one to get rid of and uh, just to confirm we can find where this moistening then is defined so let's see we didn't have a one here but it's not here two we did have three we did have four we didn't but it's not there's no moistening here and five we have becoming damp that means moistening so that's our definition here number five defines oops defines this uh, answer number eight uh, answer number nine sorry moistening so we can add that in the grid here we are then number 10 that's a longer one to provoke discussion they proposed a new method new method for telling different isotopes of coal nab uh, nab link scientists uh, to more reliably determine the age of objects now you might have heard me when i read that that doesn't actually sound very plausible nab ling scientists so something's up here and it's going to be enabling scientists right it's i think it's pretty obvious from this nab i mean pretty hard to put anything else here so it's going to be car something enabling and we need um eight more letters now isotopes of car obviously isotopes of a chemical element has isotopes right well can you think of a chemical element starting with car that would be carbon so isotopes of carbon now that means we have four letters out of this nine so we need five more letters a word of five letters so telling different isotopes of carbon there's something missing telling uh, different isotopes doesn't really work but telling apart something so differentiating between different isotopes so telling different isotopes of carbon apart if we put and then comma enabling scientists to more reliably determine the, the age of objects and obviously carbon dating is a real thing uh, in science for determining the age of of objects so what we added here was bonaparte which is a valid answer a name and it's the name of and we can scroll up to see where the definition of french head of state napoleon bonaparte was was the was he king or emperor of france and yeah that's the answer bonaparte so we can and uh, add that to our answers bonaparte if i can spell that correctly yeah so now we have four four answers left and then we can look at how to uh, sort of interpret this grid here we have John the musician, and again this is this was the definition part for another clue, so we're not going to be changing that. John the musician claims to have a serious personality, but I think he, Sarah, an ally. Um, now the end is going to be the changed part. He, Sarah, an ally. What on earth does that mean? So again, let's do it sort of systematically again. He, Sarah, on ally. Just put that as a as one word and think. Uh, first of all, where the spaces are going to go, and second of all, where we are going to be inserting something. So he claims something, but I think he either he does something or he is or he's. Now this looks like he is with this s here. He's a works now he's a uh, something starting with r now what's this end going to be it's not going to be ally on ali and that is 
going to be the end of the word personally. So I think something personal. So we're going to be add, adding something ending in purse. And it's going to be comma personally. I think something personally. So here's a something starting with RA. And so that something would be the opposite of a person with a serious personality. And that answer is going to be, uh, or that word is going to be the word rascal. So a rascal is someone who does not have a, a serious personality. So John the musician claims to have a serious personality, but I think he's a rascal personally. And what we added into this whole whole sentence was the eight letter word scalpers. And now we just have to find the definition for that. And it's not in one. This we had, this we had, this we had. These all have had the definitions already. We've marked those. This was marked, this was marked. And here we have ticket resellers. If you scalp tickets, you resell, buy them in order to sell them to someone else. So ticket resellers works for a definition for scalpers. So seven had the definition for uh, this number 11. So scalpers is the answer. Then we have three left. So 12, and that's a short one. Um, the member of SEAL teamed a box lunch at the base. Um, I sort of revealed something that I shouldn't have maybe when I said that this base in the in the surface reading refers to an army base. Obviously it doesn't. There's no army re reference here. But the reason I said that was because in the answer it does refer to an army base. Uh, but I didn't realize it at, at the moment. Sorry about that. So it's going to be an army reference. The member of now seal is spelled in lowercase here, and this is a case where we have to actually capitalize these letters. So it's going to be seal with an uppercase, which is uh, the U.S. Uh, Navy's like the special forces, right? Seal the seals, the seal team, and we are inserting something here, and it's actually this is capitalized as well. Seal team. Uh, and there's a SEAL Team 6. That's the, the sort of the uh, one, gr one group of special forces in, in the US Navy. So 6 is going to be something added here. Now we need four more letters here. Something ed. So this is going to be the verb here. What do you do to a box lunch? You pack it. So the member of SEAL Team 6 packed a box lunch. And what we uh, what we inserted was a 3-4 phrase, 6-pack. So 6-pack um, is, is a, uh, an existing thing. And we can just find the definition for 6-pack. Now, 6-pack six six can be you can have a 6-pack of abs or you can have a 6-pack of a beverage. And here we have, I think it was in the first one, a number of PS would be a six pack. So that's our definition for six pack. And we can add that in the grid. Okay, and now two left. The king of Croatia. And now we have a very short clue, and this part has already been used as a definition. So that's going to be remaining unchanged. Used to confiscate one fiery. And since we only have two um, two clues left, we might actually look at um, what definition, uh, possible definitions we haven't used. So let's see, this one we had, we haven't used this, so either fleet or morning or this morning. And then there's a only one other one that we haven't used for a definition part. So it's this one to provoke this either to provoke discussion or the age of objects or objects. But even in this, I think it's possible to 
sort of see which part is going to be the definition part. And how you might see that is, uh, so carbon dating, that's what you do to determine the age of objects. So that's very uh, closely related to uh, what we have here. So that's why we, you would try to tell different isotopes of carbon apart. Whereas to provoke discussion, this could just be removed. You could just have this clue as a valid printer's, de printer's can I say that? Printer's devilry. It's somehow hard to pronounce. Uh, you might, you could have j this just, just this part as, as a valid clue. They proposed a new method, blah, blah, blah. So why is this to provoke discussion there? Well, the answer is, it's going to be a definition. So either to provoke or to provoke discussion. Well, it's not going to be the, uh, the, the definition of this one. Uh, and the answer is, we still haven't solved this one, and this hasn't had a definition yet. And it can't have its own definition because the, the rule said that each clue has a definition for one of the other clues. So we know 14 is going to have our definition, the one that we need for this one. So the fleet or morning. Now, the king of Croatia used to confiscate one fire something. And the definition is going to be fleet here. We need, we're going to insert six letters here, meaning fleet, and that's going to be the word armada. So one firearm a day. You might what you might confiscate is uh, a firearm is something that you might confiscate. One one thing that that can be an object of this this verb here, and one firearm a day used to was in the habit of doing something one time a day. So Amada is our answer here, and fleet was the definition. And filling that in the grid, and we have only one, one left, and we know where this uh, definition then is. So it was here, to provoke or to provoke discussion, one of those two. So Fleet Street and, and fleet was the definition, so we're not changing this. Fleet Street was full of cared illegally this morning. Cared is going to be the, the part that's out of place here. Full of cared uh, makes no sense, and cared illegally also makes no sense. So either way it goes, it makes no sense. So we're going to have to split this somehow. So, so to provoke five letters, if you can come up with that, is uh, you spark, spark discussion, a provoke discussion, and that would make, oops, was full of cars parked illegally, which makes sense. Uh, Fleet Street was full of cars parked illegally this morning. Makes sense. You can park something illegally, park in a place that you're not supposed to. So spark was the answer here, and uh, just for completeness, I'm just gonna mark the provoke thing. To provoke or to provoke discussion could be other way. I'm gonna say provoke, just provoke, to spark. Um, and spark is the answer here. And do we get the message as well? I think we do. Yep, hooray. So that tells us that we are correct here. Now, we have a finished grid here, but the, the the rules said nothing about how to interpret this. We do have one, actually, we do have, I'm going to go back, we have one uh, indication of what to do here, and that's in the, if we scroll all the way down, we have these tags, sort of what kind of puzzle it is. And some of them are standard. We always have our knowledge and geography. We have crosswords, which we have done. Obviously, we filled in this crossword grid. We had printer's devilry, or, or so, so the type of type of clues that we had. But we haven't used this one, mazes. So it's going to form some kind of maze. And let's go back to the, the grid and see how that might work. So we're going to start here. This E is going to be our first letter, and this K is going to be our last letter. So uh, let me just get a 
what tool do we use do we use this or do we use the line tool i like i like the colors more because you can read the read the letters so we're going to start with this e here and we have to get to this k and then out of the grid and it's a maze now maze is um doesn't this have tons of options like you could do something like this and that's valid that's you started from there and it there so this this doesn't have walls so how do you how does this have a one single solution and you have to come up with with the rules yourself uh, so there is one way to uh, sort of make a rule here that forces you one certain way in, in the grid and uh, how you might find it is you look at this um, why why you would you put these words in the grid what's the sort of uh, common thing between these adjacent clues elton and alcali what do those have in common and thomas love and eliminate and so forth and if you look at all these pairs there's one thing that they all have and that is one common letter so thomas love and vikings have this one i all the other letters are different eliminate and red not have this one n in common standardized and utilizable have uh this t in common and everything has one letter in common so if we mark those uh this i then we have these n's these a's these d's t's i's and so forth a's here p's a's and this a as well so that if we are only changing uh, these um, rows on these spots then we have a valid um, sort of maze that only has one solution so we go there we only have one way down we only have one way down so we go here only one way down then we go all the way here down 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 and then we have to go across here and then down 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 then from here we have to go right down then right and then down down and right and that's just the only way of traversing this grid if you are if you're only allowed to uh change row with uh, when the these letters are the same and that's our answer so that spells out if we only read these repeated letters once that spells out e l k elk i s a i s l a n d island n a t i o n a l national p a r k park so elk island national park is going to be our answer here and now we can just look up where that is so that was just a maze so that's Elk Island National Park. That is near Edmonton in Canada. Here we have a picture of it. That's where Gladys is. And uh, that is uh, has all kind of kinds of wildlife, including including these bison and all the other things that we mentioned in the preamble. And uh, let's look at the map. So Gladys is, we were in Niagara Falls last, last time on the border here. And now we are in Alberta. We are in Elk Island National Park near Edmonton. And the whole trip is looking like this. So started in Africa and here we are in Canada now. So uh, that was episode 34. Sort of printers deliver still can't say it printers devilry revisited uh, a bit different than last time but hopefully still doable uh next time we're going to have another crossword but it's going to be a a sort of um standard crossword maybe um yeah so nothing nothing this tricky 
and it's going to be called It Must Be New York, and that's going to be th uh, episode 35. So I'll see you for that one next time, and for this one, thanks for watching.